Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel All About VLSI. In this video, we are going to start with the course UVM, Universal Verification Methodology. So before going to start about uh, UVM, so we will try to discuss why do we need UVM when we already have system wedlock for verification. So basically, system wedlock is a powerful hardware description and verification language that combines Verilog with object-oriented programming and advanced verification features. While SV provides a robust environment for verification, it is basically lacking a standardized methodology for structured test benches in scalable and reused manner. So this is where the UVM is going to come into picture. So basically UVM is a framework built on the top of a system wedlock that standardizes verification environment, making them more modular, reusable and scalar for complex designs. Basically, UVM is not a language. So many of the freshers uh, think like UVM is a language. We should learn that particular language. UVM is not a language. It is a methodology. It is going to use system very long. So let's see some basic evolution of UVM uh, from SV. So early days, uh, initially verification was done using Verilog test benches uh, by applying direct stimulus. Test benches were simple procedural models that are applied uh, as input vectors and uh, checked outputs. So what are the issues uh, when we are using this particular directed test benches uh, built using Verilog? So the issues were uh, writing directed test benches uh, manually was time consuming, obviously, and uh, hard to scale for complex designs. And it is also, uh, the uh, reusability is also very low. So every project required a new test bench. So coming to in 2005, the system very long introduction, uh, like OOP concepts like classes, polymorphism and randomization, making test benches more structured. So what are the key improvements? Are uh, uh, It is more constrained random stimulus generation uh, for increasing the test coverage and functional coverage to track what scenarios are tested and assertions for checking design properties. So coming to limitations of system verilog, so no standard structure for test benches and every team had to design their own verification framework from scratch and there were no guidelines for stimulus generation, checking and coverage collection and reusability across the projects were also limited. So coming to UVM, so UVM was introduced as a standardized industry-wide methodology combining the best features of OVM and VM. So it is developed by Axelra. It became IEEE standard in uh, 2017 and now all major EDM vendors support UVM ensuring compatibility across different tools. So that was about your introduction to UVM. So we are going to start with discussion of UVM and uh, <clears throat> in this UVM uh, we have a structured test bench architecture. Now let's try to understand uh, the UVM test bench hierarchy. Normally in system very long when we are designing our test bench, uh, simply we will develop our driver. So simply we will write a class driver or uh, and we will write this particular driver code and we will simply develop our monitor class and we will develop our monitor code and this driver and monitor are instantiated in your class environment and this environment is uh, again instantiated in your test. So particularly it will look like this. So this is your environment and in this environment you are going to have a driver and you are going to have a monitor and you are also going to have reference model, scoreboard, everything, right? So this is how your SV uh, is SV test bench is going to look like. But here in UVM uh, the test bench, but here in UVM the test bench is little different. Here uh, we have built-in classes. Uh, in UVM, we have built-in classes. So the main class uh, is the, the parent class is a UVM object. From this class, uh, two branches are evolved. One is component branch and another is sequence branch. So in the case of component branch, we have a parent class which is known as UVM report object. And from that, we are getting UVM component. And from this UVM component, some more classes are being derived like UVM driver, and UVM monitor and UVM sequencer, UVM sequencer, UVM scoreboard, etc. etc. UVM and like this, we are having different parent classes. So, uh, from this 
UVM driver class, if you, if any user wants to uh, create a user defined driver class, then he must derive this UVM driver class. Then he must derive his class from this UVM driver class. And if a user wants to create his monitor class, then he must derive, then he must extend uh, his monitor class from this main UVM monitor class. And if a user wants to create a user defined UVM sequencer class, then he will extend it from this UVM sequencer class. So a user is going to extend his classes from this parent classes so that he can utilize the built in functions which are already available in this particular UVM classes, UVM parent classes. And coming to the second branch, which is, which is a sequence branch, it is going to have UVM transaction, UVM sequence item, and UVM sequence. So basically, a UVM component is uh, represents structural elements in the test match. Basically, it is created during the build phase of UVM factory via create method that we are going to see in the later sessions. And basically, UVM components have some hierarchy. So it has hierarchical names used for reporting and debugging and automatically these participate in the UVM phases. And what is meant by these phases? Why do we need these phases? We are going to discuss them. And these components are connected via TLM ports, exports and analysis port. So if I want to create all this particular functionalities, then a user must derive, a user must extend this particular, his class from the parent classes. So basically a UVM component uh, represents a structural element and it is created and it has some hierarchy. Basically UVM components have hierarchy. Now what do you mean by UVM object? Basically UVM objects are nothing but data containers or non-hierarchical utilities. So basically this UVM objects do not have any uh, hierarchy or it is only used for data stimulus purpose, uh, stimulus generation purpose. And as I have said, this particular UVM objects, uh, they don't have this parent or hierarchy. So this is the difference between your UVM components and UVM objects. So this is a typical uh, test bench structure uh, of your UVM test bench. So here we are going to have a test and uh, in this particular test we are going to have environment instantiated and this environment can contain a coverage collector and this environment is going to have a module which is known as agent. So this is a new component which is going to have in our UVM. So this agent can contain a sequencer, driver, monitor. This sequencer we do not have in our system verlo. Now we are going to study this in UVM. And this agent is going to communicate with your DUT. So here if you can see this agent is going to communicate with your DUT and agent is going to have driver and monitor. We already know the role of driver which we have studied in system log that driver is going to convert your transaction based items into pin level transactions. So and the monitor is going to collect the responses from your DUT and it is going to monitor them. So this particular agent is protocol specific. So according to the protocol, we will adjust this particular agent. Now the very amazing point about this particular agent is uh, this agent, uh, we can configure this particular agent. We, we can configure this particular agent. So what do you mean by, uh, what do I mean by configuration? So basically this agent can be of two types. One is active agent and followed by passive agent. So in UVM, I have two type of agents. One is active agent and another is passive agent. So basically active agent is an agent which is going to have sequencer and it is going to have driver as well as it is also going to have this monitor. And coming to passive agent, this passive agent is going to have only monitor. So we can configure this particular agent during our runtime to be an active agent or passive agent. So we can set this particular agent. So this is nothing but your configurability. So we are basically config configuring our agent to be as an active agent or a passive agent. And we are basically setting our agent to be a uh, active thing or passive agent. Okay. How we are configuring everything we will go and discuss in detail when we are uh, coding this particular thing. Okay. Don't worry about this. So basically if the agent is active, then your agent is going to have all the sequencer driver and it is also going to have this monitor and it is going to communicate with the DUT. And if the agent is passive, then it is only going to have this monitor and everything will be disabled. So how we are going to make it active and how we are going to make it passive, everything we are going to learn in our course. Okay. So yeah, so this is about your introduction to UVM and introduction to UVM test bench hierarchy. So yes. 
so that's all for this particular session so if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel all about vlsa thank you for watching this video